One day, in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. The scope of one's personality is defined by the magnitude of that problem which is capable of driving a person out of his wits. Just as no one can be forced into belief, so no one can be forced into unbelief. The great question that has never been answered, and which I have not yet been able to answer, despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is what does a woman want? Being entirely honest with oneself is a good exercise. A woman should soften but not weaken a man. We choose not randomly each other. We meet only those who already exist in our subconscious. We are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love. Out of your vulnerabilities will come your strength. I cannot think of any need in childhood as strong as the need for a father's protection. We are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love. Words have a magical power. They can bring either the greatest happiness or deepest despair. It is that we are never so defenseless against suffering as when we love, never so helplessly unhappy as when we have lost our loved object or its love. Words are capable of arousing the strongest emotions and prompting all men's actions. Immorality, no less than morality, has at all times found support in religion. Religion is a system of wishful illusions together with a disavowal of reality. Life, as we find it, is too hard for us, it brings us too many pains, disappointments and impossible tasks. Love and work are the cornerstones of our humanness. Everyone has wishes which he would not like to tell to others, which he does not want to admit even to himself. Before you diagnose yourself with depression or low self-esteem, make sure that you're not surrounded by fools. Unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth later in uglier ways. Neurotics complain of their illness, but they make the most of it, and when it comes to taking it away from them they will defend it like a lioness her young. The pleasure of satisfying a savage instinct, undomesticated by the ego, is uncomparably much more intense than the one of satisfying a tamed instinct. Children are completely egoistic, they feel their needs intensely and strive ruthlessly to satisfy them. The virtuous man contents himself with dreaming that which the wicked man does in actual life. When inspiration does not come to me, I go halfway to meet it. We are what we are because we have been what we have been. Dreams may be thus stated, they are concealed realizations of repressed desires. One thing about human beings puzzles me the most is their conscious effort to be connected with the object of their affection even if it kills them slowly within. Dreams with a painful content are to be analyzed as the fulfillment of wishes. Love and work. Work and love, that's all there is. 
Most people do not really want freedom, because freedom involves responsibility, and most people are frightened of responsibility. No one who, like me, conjures up the most evil of those half tame demons that inhabit the human breast, and seeks to wrestle with them, can expect to come through the struggle unscathed. Whoever loves becomes humble. Those who love have so to speak pawned a part of their narcissism. Friendship is an art of keeping distance while love is an art of intimacy. In the small matters trust the mind, in the large ones the heart. Men are more moral than they think and far more immoral than they can imagine. Religion is an illusion and it derives its strength from the fact that it falls in with our instinctual desires. Beauty has no obvious use, nor is there any clear cultural necessity for it. Yet civilization could not do without it. I have found little that is good about human beings on the whole. The madman is a dreamer awake. The interpretation of dreams is the royal road to a knowledge of the unconscious activities of the mind. Limited sex leads to increasing the value of sex. A civilization which leaves so large a number of its participants unsatisfied and drives them into revolt neither has nor deserves the prospect of a lasting existence. The mind is like an iceberg, it floats with one-seventh of its bulk above water. Neurosis is the inability to tolerate ambiguity. The doctor should be opaque to his patients and, like a mirror, should show them nothing but what is shown to him. The voice of the intellect is a soft one, but it does not rest until it has gained a hearing. The first human who hurled an insult instead of a stone was the founder of civilization. Dreams are often most profound when they seem the most crazy.